Hey everybody, this is Rhino, and we're back to another recording of Hearthstone. Today is Friday, March 1st, and that means the month ended, although on the Asian account, which is where we are, I logged in yesterday, and it was late enough that they already did the wrap-up, so I've already gotten whatever reward, I think I was at like rank 19, probably, uh, maybe I even made it up to rank 18. We've got some Hunter cards and win a game with Hunter or Druid. It would be slightly easier to win a game. Uh, so now I have to win a game with Major Shaman and uh, play Hunter cards, which is fine because we've got a lot of news still to talk about. I suppose we can show a general idea of what I got. This isn't new, I bet. This isn't new. Actually, I probably dusted it without even thinking if I did get anything new by the end of the month or well, I probably got this. No, nope, didn't get that. Or if I did, I don't remember. I wasn't paying enough attention when it happened, clearly. Alright, well, the one thing I am happy about getting is the pizza background. And we'll make that our favorite. Then let's just try a Shaman game because we haven't played Shaman today in the stream. And just play ranked and try to go up. We've got tons of news and we're trying to go through all of it. A lot of it is games. Just games. Um, there's not a lot to talk about on this Friday, which is kind of good news because usually when there is something to talk about, it, it's... Uh, Pretty bad. <laughs> A bad news in the first place. Well, this game is pretty deceptive. We have a game on Steam called Toys of War, and it's like a top down tank game, and it looks completely boring, but. Then the trailer showed this big 3D world. And I thought, oh, well, that kind of looks like toy soldiers. Uh, yeah, you, this is in the trailer. I don't think you actually play as this. Though, or this is like some boss mode or something. And then the rest of it is this 2D game. Like, that feels very deceptive. This game is $8.99 discounted. Only supports English. Uh, yeah, that's not making it to the follow list. <laughs> Probably wouldn't have been anyways, but... Let's add a random elemental. Uh, Tech Raptor has an article. Fortnite revenue down 48% month over month. Digital game spending down year over year. So, even Fortnite uh, is not doing great. And they're, frankly, the ones doing the best. Uh, and I'm not so jaded or silly to, to think that this is some kind of user uprising, like, blacklisting of Fortnite because they hate the Epic Games Store. I imagine what this is is just, uh, just the fact that People who play Fortnite are usually kids and don't have any money. And people put, kids may have put money into it the first time and then their parents said no the second time or the third time. Or the kids themselves realized it wasn't worth it. Uh, meanwhile, they mentioned Red Dead Redemption 2 here. So I, it is, I guess, worth uh, mentioning that they, apparently from what I'm seeing, totally made it twice as hard to get any money or uh, outside of paying real world money for Red Dead Redemption and they made everything I think more expensive on top of that and they just like the the economy for Red Dead Redemption 2 was already complained about quite a lot for being terrible and they made it even worse and just like an incredibly greedy cash grab uh, 
Let's see, they have a list here on TechRuptor's article. The top 10 grossing titles worldwide across the platform for January were Dungeon Fighter Online, a game I've never heard of. Uh, League of Legends, a game I have heard of, uh, but I wouldn't really have immediately assumed would have been the contender. Uh, I guess we can just play a bunch of minions. Hmm. I'm just gonna end the turn here. Uh, Fantasy F Westward Journey Online 2, a game I haven't heard of. Crossfire. Fortnite is in number 5 as far as money it got. Then below it is PUBG. Then below it is World of Warcraft West, which I guess does not include like China World of Warcraft or Eastern World of Warcraft servers. Uh, World of Tanks is number eight. Sims 4 is number nine in Dota 2. As far as console, it's FIFA 19, uh, which kind of makes sense. People that spend money on FIFA are crazy. Then Fortnite, then Super Smash Bros. Ultimate, are there microtransactions in Super Smash Bros. Ultimate? I didn't think there were, so how, how did they get any money at all? That doesn't make sense. Alright. This guy. Well, under Super Smash Bros. Ultimate is GTA 5, Call of Duty Black Ops 3, NBA 2K19, Madden NFL 19, Red Dead Redemption 2, Tom Clancy Rainbow Six Siege, and FIFA 18. So FIFA owns both the top and the 10th spot. For mobile microtransactions, Honor of Kings, Pokemon Go, Fake Grand Order, uh, Candy Crush Saga. Saga is number four. Clash of Clans is number five. I can, as someone who plays Clash of Clans, I can recognize why that would be the case. I desperately need gold in Clash of Clans. Like, desperately, desperately need gold to upgrade nearly every card. Like, I have everything at either 10 or 11, and, and I need about 20,000 gold for every single card in the game. To upgrade it to the next level. Uh, below Clash of Clans is Brawl Stars, uh, then Monster Strike, then Puzzle and Dragons, then Toon Blast, then Clash Royale. So Clash of Clans, Clash Royale. Oh no, actually I play Clash Royale. Don't I? Uh, Clash of Clans, Cl Brawl Stars, and Clash Royale are all the same company owned in part by uh, I believe Tencent. Uh, invested in them at least so yeah there's there's they're making bank on that not sure that was really an article worth mentioning but whatever no big deal we already talked about this game so that's just a duplicate um, so I don't need to talk about it again. Next we have a game on Steam called Pew Pew Rocket, which looks like it's a, a Ga Gala Galaga shooters shoot 'em up game. Uh, arcade style. Doesn't look particularly unique or good. I don't see anything here that interests me. It's a dollar thirty nine cents discounted. So yeah. That's not gonna make it to the follow list. Okay. Do that. And that. And can we then get rid of that? Hmm. We probably won't win the next turn. 
Next, we have a game on Steam called Repto Mom, which is apparently half mom, half reptile, which is a funny concept for a like cutaway joke and about and that's about it. You definitely shouldn't make an entire platformer game or attempt to make a platformer game on that concept. This is early access for four dollars and twenty-four cents discounted. Five Steam achievements, which is kind of a low amount of Steam achievements. Uh, which is slightly concerning, but not really. So yeah, Repto Mom not making it to the follow list. Yeah, I don't see how you make a game like that. Um, Alright, here we go. Alright. Yeah. And that'll be me game over. This might be big news or it might not, and it's odd that this is only mentioned by Gamatsu. Uh, on top of everybody else that could be an announcing this information. Uh, Gamatsu has an article, Gearbox Software teases, quote, never before seen reveals, exclusives, and surprises for PAX East 2019 panel on March 28th. Now, does that mean anything really important is going to get announced? No, that's just hype. And Gearbox certainly could maintain and grow some hype to have people not think about the problems with Randy Pitchford and and their former uh, chief legal officer I believe it was suing each other uh, and making very slanders dirty claims uh, so what would be really interesting is to see if at the PAX East panel, if Randy Pitchford gets on stage, which I believe his ego probably would force him to do that, uh, or if he's just gonna learn to, to while all of these things come around him and all these accusations are getting thrown at him to hide in the background and, and not make it about him and instead make it about the games. Uh, it's time definitely for Borderlands 3 to be officially announced and have a release date and stuff like that. Uh, doing it at PAX East and not waiting till E3 is probably fine. Like, it's they'll probably have some new footage for E3 too, or also. Uh, so, I don't think that's gonna be a big deal. Oh. Let's see if there's any other information here. The PAX East panel will be on March 28th from 2 p.m. to 3 p.m., which having a hard hour long uh, announcement tells me it's probably not a lot, particularly since it might be barely a. 30-minute panel with a lot of questions and answers. Uh, back in January of 2015, Gearbox Software announced that it was recruiting staff to work on the Borderlands game. So here it is four years later in 2019. Uh, it's also possible you'll hear about a Borderlands Game of the Year edition that was first rated for the PS4, Xbox One, and PC in Korea back in May 2018. And then again January 2019 uh, now is that a remaster or game of the year edition of Borderlands 1 or is that something that combines a game of the year edition of Borderlands 1 with the Handsome Jack collection which is Borderlands 2 and Borderlands the pre-sequel uh, I wouldn't even be surprised if they came out and said we've got a small team working on Tales from the Borderlands 
to uh, to make more of those games and continue that story. I also wouldn't really be surprised if they said we've got something Duke Nukem related. Like they, they own Duke Nukem. I also wouldn't be surprised if they they didn't say something like we've got something Bulletstorm related. So there's going to be a, like it could be some major bait and switch that happens uh, because they got into publishing so this could be an announcement for any game that they're just publishing and not an announcement for something that they that gearbox themselves made uh, this could be we happy few too uh, it, it could be a couple different games that they published uh, so yeah there's a lot of outs to use a magician's term there's a lot of different ways in which you could say never before the scene reveals exclusives and surprises and and there's still some problems frankly about what is borderlands 3 going to be uh scooter's not going to be in it the guy who voices scooter is doesn't work for for gearbox anymore and on top of that the character of scooter was killed off in tales from the borderlands which i most people probably won't remember so that's not as much of an issue um, um, I don't know if Moxie's going to be in it I don't know if any of the characters from the previous games are going to be in it whoever does Tiny Tina maybe she's in it maybe she isn't like that there's there's a potential that Borderlands 3 has no returning characters and there is also a potential that Borderlands 3 feels nothing like Borderlands 1 or 2 uh, even Borderlands the pre-sequel went in a weird direction that people didn't like uh, I'm about to lose so I still would probably very much play Borderlands 3 even if it's an awful game. I feel like I've committed to that much. But if I find out it's an awful game, I probably would wait quite a long time. I still haven't played the pre-sequel, so there's a good 60 to 100 hours uh, in playing that, I would imagine. And uh, I'm in this weird position where I played Borderlands 2 just like six months ago, so I'm not really aching for new content. Uh, Just gonna switch between the mage and shaman until I get a victory. Next, we have a game on Steam called Fruit Punch, which is one of these balancing ball upward games. Um, I've seen other games like this, and I don't, I will don't fight with see a reason why I'd want to play this game. This, this feels like a physics game that would might be interesting to play in the real world for about five minutes but not something I'd w ever want to do digitally they want nine dollars and 59 cents discounted for this and it definitely does not look like a game that deserves nine dollars and 59 cents to me so yeah that's not making it to the follow list hmm. this one is next one is tagged with sexual content and I don't see nudity just sexual content interesting uh, visual novel so let me just go through all the screenshots and make sure it's YouTube friendly like I've never gotten any kind of community guideline strike so nothing I've ever done has been too bad but I also don't know if maybe everything I've done in the past year might be getting demonetized and I just don't have a clue uh, that, that's totally possible since my channel isn't monetized at all um, and not by my choice uh, so yeah who knows but regardless we'll just go forward as long as my channel stays below a thousand subscribers which it is getting subscribers quite a bit more so thanks to anybody that subscribed recently uh, that's very nice uh, but 
Until it gets over a thousand subscribers, it can't be monetized, so this will be the time in which I'm going to push the limits of YouTube's uh, demonetization engine to see how far I can get away with it. And then I'll start probably being a little bit more conservative once I start seeing those yellow dollar signs. Next we have a game on Steam called One Under Wing. This is the one with sexual content. It looks to me like it is a slightly airplane based visual novel. Probably Yuri game. There's a lot of girls here, but maybe not. Maybe you're playing as a male character that's just never seen. And yeah, so if you love airplanes and you love anime girls and you want the two combined, you've got it. Maybe the art style here is a little rough, uh, but nothing looks too bad. It's $25.49 discounted. That's really expensive, uh, but not completely unheard of uh, either. And I'm not sure I've never heard I've heard of this publisher, Soul Press. Yeah. Hmm. Well, I'll put this one on the follow list, and we'll move on. Uh, take note. I suppose it's worth mentioning that the anime girls as I'm looking at them. They're wearing schoolgirl outfits. So, Steam's claim that there was a law in Washington State, which is where Valve is located, that forbade anything that indicated somebody might be underage, thus any anime girl in a schoolgirl outfit, whether it's a high school outfit or a junior high or college outfit, uh, who knows, uh, that they were using school girl outfits in particular as a marker to say your game was not allowed. And I, it feels very much like it was a rogue employee that was doing it, like one crazy employee. I, I still think it might have been an employee who used to work for Fire, uh, the developers of Firewatch. Uh, the same person that that claimed they were going to take down PewDiePie's video of covering Firewatch, uh, I suspect. Uh, anyways, Steam seems to have no problem with school girl outfits, and we've heard no more on that story like after nearly three months of, of people complaining of being rejected. As for Under One Wing, actually looks pretty interesting, even though it's really expensive, I'll put it on the fall list. And that is definitely not one though that would be at the top of the list as far as games to buy as visual novels, uh, just because of the price. Moving on, we have a game called Hidden Saga. Uh, as Zamandalon Stone? X A M A D O N Zamadion Stone? I have no idea how you'd pronounce that. I don't even know what language that is. Uh, seems like it's made up. This looks like a hidden objects in the black and white world, which might be a little boring. Um, there, there's some other games sort of like this already on Steam. This is early access for $5.95 and it's English and Turkish. So, uh, yeah, I guess maybe that is Turkish. I'll put it on the fall list. I don't know if I've ever even wishlisted a Turkish game. Didn't know there was that much of a Turkish uh, video game development field. I'll give that one a chance until we see something else. Uh, TechRaptor has an article, Anti-Vaxxers are coming to Plague Inc. There's a lot I still need to do if I was ever to go back and try to 100% Plague Inc. Uh, like, the, the truth is uh, they keep adding stuff to it, so there's, all, there's almost always 
a good reason to go back in every six months at minimum to play Plague Inc. If, if that's your one of your favorite one and only style games. Um, This and then do I want to kill anything? I can kill something. Let's let's do some damage there. And then do some damage there. Uh, so I imagine this will be a event like so many other events that is added to Plague Inc. Uh, somebody started a change.org petition last week to add anti-vaxxers as a buff in Plague Inc. Um, that they said they will include an anti-vaxxer scenario. Scenarios have you play with either a preset pathogen or conditions with a specific story behind them. So not quite a buff, uh, but uh, a scenario. So I thought they'd just make it an event uh, because there already are some events in Plague Inc. that work around similar concepts and ideas where you're uh, not... Can I do this? Okay. Uh, where people decide they shouldn't wash their hands or something like that uh, as often uh, or mass one of them is like mass hysteria breaks breaks loose and people flee over the borders of countries to spread the infection further so yeah I, dream. I think an event might make more sense than a scenario but it's probably easier to make a scenario than rebalance the entirety of what Plague Inc. is at this point. Um, and Plague Inc. developer has moved over, I believe, to their other game, Rebel Inc., which... Uh, so I'm not sure that they're super interested in uh, doing that anyways. Oh, I could have won. If I had played that... I would have had three, six, nine extra damage. Hmm. I suspect nobody will complain too loudly, but there might be some people that try to review bomb or or get upset at uh, at Plague Inc for adding that scenario. Uh, that being said, I really question how much of the anti-vax movement are really really people that believe in it and uh, how much of it is just trolls. From what I've heard the anti-vax movement was a 4chan troll to start off with. Clearly there are people that have bought into it and believe it because otherwise there wouldn't actually be people out there not vaccinating their 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 children and over like 8,000 kids were were expelled from school in one of the in Canada I think for not having up-to-date vaccination records um, and the measles outbreak seems like it is really definitely enough there is also accusations that the anti-vax movement is being funded by other state actors, Russian trolls, Chinese trolls, uh, other countries' trolls, trying to just get the stupid Americans to, to cause a plague to spread out, which they're kind of succeeding at. So that's a failure of the United States educational system and our health educational system in particular. Uh, Reporting for duty. So. This is this is gonna piss him off. Well played. Uh, so yeah, I never know about the whole anti-vax thing. 
But then again, I also never know about like half of the people that comment on my videos either. Uh, half the time people say things and I think they're just trolling. Uh, so y you never know. Now I need to play some hunter cards. And just in general, let's play until we go an hour and a half long and and or get all the news done. Uh, Gamato has the same article. We already kind of talked about this. Our world is ended is for the ps4 and switch has been delayed to april 18th in north america and europe the physical edition is due out may 7th in north america our world is ended is the visual novel where it's a group of people that made like a a mmo in, let's see uh, it's also planned to release on on steam sometime in 2019 but clearly that's not top priority um, uh, Susan Wojcicki, I believe, actually came out of her her secret hiding spot, I guess is what I'll call it, and uh, retweeted a creator blog from YouTube. Um, so they have now a full creator blog instead of a post that is hidden under YouTube help uh, called More Update on Actions Related to the Safety of Minors on YouTube. Uh, dear creators, we know that many of you follow the closely the actions we're talking to protect young people on YouTube and deeply concerned as we are that, that we get this right. We want to update you on some of the additional changes we're making, particularly in regards to comments and building the efforts we shared the last week. Uh, so this is about people putting disgusting comments on what seem to be innocuous home movie videos. Uh, with children in them. Uh, now, as for the Momo challenge, that that whole Momo challenge thing, I think, is straight up just corporate espionage. Uh, I'm not sure it exists anywhere in any real numbers for it to have been brought up in the news at all or mentioned. Uh, Apparently, the difference between the Momo challenge and the Blue Whale challenge is that the Blue Whale challenge breaks down kids mentally before asking them to kill themselves, where the Momo challenge literally, I think, tells them straight up that they have to kill themselves as the first step. Hmm. Uh, let's see. Talking about this, though. Uh, we recognize comments are core part of YouTube experience and how you connect with with and grow your audience at the same time it's important steps that we're sharing today are critical for keeping people safe thank you thank you for your understanding and feedback as we continue to work to protect the YouTube community below is a summary of the main steps we've taken to improve child safety on YouTube since our update last Friday now here's here's where we get into uh, semantics, like, the, of like the, the semantics here are these comments, which may be disgusting, are somehow endangering, like nothing. physically or mentally endangering children. And I don't know how that's the case. Maybe you can make an argument that the, you're disgusting comments so they might be mentally endangering children who read the comments, which is unrealistic that any children would read the comments on a YouTube video. Really? And that that's just taking it to an extreme uh, exaggerated danger. Uh, uh, but let's see. The first part of this paragraph says, Disabling comments on videos featuring minors. Uh, over the past week, we've disabled comments for tens of millions of videos that could be subject to predatory behavior. These efforts are focused on videos featuring young minors, and we will continue to identify videos at risk over the next four mo few months. Over the next few months, we are broadening this action to suspend comments on videos featuring young minors and videos featuring older minors that could be at risk of attracting predatory behavior. Um, I'm not super upset with the idea that by default they just 
disable comments on videos with minors in it. Uh, the problem is then you have to trust YouTube's algorithm to, to know the difference between say somebody who's just short and somebody who's a minor or a animated character in a video game like if i tried to play something like the last of us and ellie's in there and she's like a 13 year old girl uh is that going to get comments automatically disabled and the only way i would be okay with comments being automatically disabled also is if this can be then reversed by somebody who's going to take on that responsibility themselves uh, because if I'm putting a video up and making content and it says we think there are minors in your videos so we're going to automatically disable comments I as the content creator should be able to go in there and say no I want comments uh, even if that does mean I'm going to take on more responsibility of moderating the comments because of that which honestly is still not really fair uh, because because most of these comments could easily just be marked as spam and spam filters uh, this is a failing really of YouTube's comment system let's see uh, the second paragraph on this. A small number of creators will be able to keep comments enabled on these type of videos. These channels will be required to actively moderate their comments beyond just using the mo our moderation tools and demonstrate a low risk of predatory behavior. We will work with them directly and our goal is to grow the number of uh, a number of over time as our ability to catch them. Of volative comments I continues to improve so basically Ryan's toy review will still get comments that uh, is all that means that's literally all that boils down to is they're not going to disable comments on the top tier uh, top tier youtubers like Ryan's toys review uh, where every single episode in that is uh, is a kid a minor in it that would probably cripple him, although the Nickelodeon did just give him a, jo a job, so maybe he's leaving YouTube anyways. Uh, Alright. How do we want to do this? Here. Here. Take that. Get rid of that. Hmm. In the turn. Uh, the next paragraph on this is YouTube uh, launching new comments classifier. While we've been removing hundreds of millions of comments for violating our policy, we have been working on an even more effective classifier. This will identify and remove predatory comments. This classifier does not affect the monetization of your video. We've accelerated its launch and now have a new comments classifier in place that is more sweeping in scope and will detect and remove two times more uh, individual comments. So it feels like they had that ready to go from day one. So why wasn't it like, seriously, why was that not already available? Like, that, that doesn't make a lot of sense. <laughs> Next paragraph. Taking action on creators who cause egregious harm to the community. Uh, no form of content that endangers minors is acceptable on YouTube which is why we have terminated certain channels that attempt to endanger children in any way. Videos encouraging harmful and dangerous challenges targeting any audiences are clearly against our policies. Uh, clearly um, is a bit of an overstatement, I think, in some instances, but whatever. Um, Do 
I need to attack? Uh, not really. Uh, we will continue to take actions when creators violate our policies in ways that blatantly harm the product user and creator community. Please continue to flag these to us. Thank you for your understanding as we make challenge changes. Uh, my only real problem with this creator blog is the idea that there will still be this elite class of top tier YouTubers that can have kids that have minors in it and still have comments. Uh, and then every other YouTuber, if you have a kid in it, even for maybe a second or maybe a animated virtual kid in it, uh, then you're automatically going to get demonetized. Um, which I just don't think that's fair. Um, Here comes a big but whatever. I mean, that's just how it's going to be, I suppose. Uh, my main concern as a video game content creator is are they going to start saying uh, like Ashley in Resident Evil 4 she's she's like 16 17 she's underage uh, am I endangering a minor when uh, she gets caught by a zombie if I play Resident Evil 4 uh, so my, mine is m much like the THQ Nordic thing which which until there's more news to report on that I don't think there's really uh, any more reason to report on that uh, but yeah I don't know in a lot of these people's minds cartoon anime girls anime characters cartoon characters are still minors and even fictional minors can't be endangered in some of these people's minds which then that's just pro censorship and blatant ridiculousness um, like Huckleberry Finn you know Tom Sawyer there's a lot of books out there where kids are in danger uh, there's a lot of classics out there where kids are or in danger are you really trying to make the claim that fiction uh, classic fiction is no longer acceptable uh, because that I'm not really willing to live in a world where that becomes the new standard. Let's see. I am trying to win here, so let's take this victory. And there's certainly no comments on videos including minors. Also has this chilling effect. Uh, good mythical morning. I guess I'll just play as Hunter still. Um, they recently had a video where their kids came on and one of the kids, one of the main host kids uh, tested help help them test uh, uh, jock straps by kicking him in the groin uh, so I thought that was pretty funny I thought that was low-hanging fruit comedy but certainly uh, I guess pun unintended there but I thought that was funny if YouTube comes back and says actually no you you're endangering a child because there is a child in your your show they probably wouldn't say that to Good Mythical Morning because they've got too many, uh, too many subscribers and they're too big. But yeah, does that mean that the main hosts of Good Mythical Morning are gonna stop bringing their their preteen, teenage sons on on the show? Like that sucks at that point. Like, what if you are a kid and you want your video on YouTube and you want to interact with your friends uh, and have comments? Like, 
that this is no. draconian. It's a little too draconian. They they should just fix their classifier, really. Is the one thing they should have done is said, we're just gonna fix our classifier. We're gonna catch all these things. We're not gonna disable comments. Uh, we're not gonna let bad actors continuously chisel and nip away at what is the foundation of YouTube, the thing that makes YouTube good. Uh, and it, bad actors in this case includes both the people putting on the comments and people creating ad apocalypses intentionally to to compete against YouTube and lose in advertising revenue. To my side. Hmm. Because YouTube could get to be a very quiet place, certainly, if it just has to continuously or decides to continuously go down the censorship route. It would be a very boring place. Next, we have a game on Steam called Space Engineers. I think this game has been in early access for a long time. And now it is um, apparently out of early access and a finished product. It's $15.99. Um, apparently, they also have a game called Medieval Engineers. I'm not sure that there's much of a single player experience here. Uh, but I'm kind of willing to give this one a follow and think about it. Uh, my fear is this is probably just a fancier version of Kerbal Space Program and the amount of entertainment I'll get from it is probably pretty low. Uh, but it is pretty and it's rated high and so it really is just going to come down to how much of a single player experience can I get out of it and is it the type of game that I really want to play? I hunt alone. Hmm. I Let's hunt go ahead alone. and do this. Uh, Gamatsu has an article, Konami 50th Anniversary Collection Arcade Classics have been rated in Australia. Um, so I imagine that's just a bunch of Konami arcade classic games and classic being a loose term in that case um, Tech Raptor has a Dirt Rally 2.0 review hyphen sometimes online so apparently the online is is buggy uh, they gave it a 7.0 very good in summary is Dirt Rally 2.0 is a great racing game that's plagued by online connectivity issues and sometimes punishing design choices that keep it from being accessible. Pros are top-notch racing, it's always fair, and it has satisfying wins. Uh, the cons are lack of tutorials, awful, and awful online connectivity, and Rallycross falls flat. Um, I liked Dirt Showdown because it it kind of, I think Dart Showdown is the one I'm thinking of. It had a bit of a split there where you're doing some other things on top of just playing Rallycross races. Uh, but just playing Rallycross racing I think is not something that interests me enough. Nor do I really even think I need to play another dirt game for a, a long time is this one gonna load any pictures hmm. next we have a russian troll game is all i could call it it's almost like in this case even if this isn't made by a russian person or a russian seeming person in style it is a russian troll game <laughs> Uh, 64 cents discounted, English and Russian, like, the, the video is like a, a live action video of a guy showing off his butt, 
so I won't show that. Uh, it's just like, yeah, this is not supporting English. So yeah, not something that interests me. Uh, I can pretty much guarantee that there's not going to be anything that happens. Um, I, I lost that, lost the freaking spell card somehow. Uh, I don't think there's going to be any game that comes out related to any presidential election in the next few years that would catch my attention and make me want to play it. Um, there is an idea there if you're going to make like a Telltale style game uh, and it was very well written and it kind of didn't try to touch on modern day politics or at all. Uh, there might be something of an idea in that. But outside of that thought yeah, I think it would be just too inflammatory, I guess is the word, to try to play some game where you play as a, a president or as a presidential candidate. And almost every single game I have seen, uh, no, every single game I've seen at this point that tries to do something like that is really just a joke game at the best and usually a troll game. Okay, so do I want to do this and die? No. So we gotta do this. Well, that worked. Let's see. Hmm. Uh, moving on, we have a game on Steam called Thimble, which looks like it's an action sword game of some sort it's got kind of a unique art style with some comic book cutscenes it looks like I don't know I don't know about this one but I'm willing to give it a chance because it looks different and yeah it seems like it's kind of a hack and slash top-down game I don't know how long it is, this would be a concern. $17.99 discounted. I'll give it a chance. I'll give it a chance and we'll see if it if people like it. I haven't heard anything about it and it looks like a game that probably should have had some advertisement around it, uh, particularly at that price. Next we have a game on Steam called Pogo Stuck Rage With Your Friends, which looks like a jumping game getting over it with Bennett body style game maybe uh, six dollars and 29 cents discounted uh, I don't see anything here that interests me personally yeah you, you wouldn't really be able to sell me on the game where you're just jumping up and up and up that's just doodle jump This and this and this. Well fought. I concede. Why do you have to concede? I was about to win. Win streak bonus. Yay, we're up to rank 21. Let's keep on playing. Stick with the hunter. Next, we have a game on Steam called Virtual Spaceport, which looks like a VR game. We haven't seen any VR games so far, and it's been over four hours, I think. Uh, close to that. 
Uh, there's Rexa. nothing here visually Versus that looks Rexa. diverse enough. It, it looks like you're just seeing the same things over and over again. Requires VR, $13.49, which is about the right price. Discounted. Um, but it kind of feels like it is just a... Uh, they're, well, they're calling it a creative building game. It kind of looks like it was just a building blocks puzzle game of some sort. If even that much. Alright, let's get rid of all of those. So, yeah, that doesn't interest me, so. Well, not put that on the list. Can we play anything? No. In the turn. Next, we have a game on Steam called The Secret Order 7 Shadow Breach. It's a hidden object game, so don't get too sold on the trailer. Uh, yeah. Just your standard hidden object game, $11.99. Not from Big Fish Games, because it doesn't say Collector's Edition and it's not $13, but definitely in that same vein, uh, $51.40 to buy the six uh, games of this, which that doesn't make sense. How can there be uh, six versions? Because the Secret Order 1 is not included, apparently. Interesting. That, that kind of sucks. Uh, that is really, really expensive for... Well, no, actually, it's about the exact right price for a hidden object game, and that's why... I am not playing hidden object games anymore. Yeah, that's not making it to the final list. Let's see. To my side. Hmm. Hmm. Guess we'll play this, yeah. To my side. And then in the turn. Next we have the game Flashback coming to PC again, getting re-released. Uh, Flashback, I believe, is the sequel or spiritual successor to the game Another World or Out of This World or whatever the third name for that series that game was. Um, this also, I believe, is kind of like the spiritual predecessor to uh, the Prince of Persia series. So, yeah. This does not look as polished as the remaster of Another World or Out of This World, but yeah. This should be on my fall list. It's already rated positively. Uh, it probably should be in my wish list because it has relevancy in history here. Um, some verge, this version includes a modern mode with post FX graphics fitter, completely remastered soft sound and music, brand new rewind function. Yeah, a rewind function would be super helpful in these really difficult games. Um, so this is a good update to the original, which I think the update, the original, probably was on Steam. And maybe it got taken down for a few weeks and then they put out this remastered version. Alright, let's see. This next game is tagged with nudity. Yeah. Um, I don't know if this is a cheap Chinese game or if this is a crazy, wacky Japanese game. Either could be. I'm seeing a Japanese character wearing what was traditional Japanese underwear, which is basically nothing in it besides a cloth. And uh, frankly, underwear, uh, it turns out, is wasn't super in demand or popular in Japan for quite a long time. Uh, I, according to this YouTube video I saw, at least that nudity certainly nudity and co-ed bathing were pretty popular uh, until like the 1700s or so. I don't know, it had to have been earlier than that. 
a late in that, like 1970s? Maybe? Nah, yeah, that's... Hmm. I don't know. 1870s, possibly. I wonder. So, anyways, this game is called Otokomizu. Um, or maybe that's Otaku. No, that's not Otaku. That's Otokomizu. Let's see. Hovering in the sky of Edo City with a uh, mm -hmm. jetpack 3D. I don't, I don't know what this is. It's This game is $11.99 with a 40% discount. And it's English and Japanese. It has 82 achievements. It feels like it's an achievement game to me. It feels like a silly, crazy achievement game. And it's tag nudity, but honestly, uh, you're seeing the buttocks of the male Japanese character, and that's it in their traditional... Japanese uh, underwear. Uh, it's not a pretty looking game. It's not really an interesting looking game. Uh, this studio that's developing it is called Big Boys Studio. Uh, this feels like this is a troll game going a different route. Um, uh, there's a comment here saying that this is 500 billion people nationwide are fans of this okay there are way less than 500 billion people on the planet there are way less than 500 billion people have ever been alive in all of recorded history uh, so yeah this is a troll game this is a game that, that's lying so I'll leave it at that and we'll just move forward. Can't show you any of it anyways. Uh, next we have an article from Tech Raptor. Toe Jam and Earl back in the groove review. Hyphen not so funky fresh. This is what I've heard from several people is that the Toe Jam and Earl game is not that great. In fact, I was kind of hearing it months ago. Uh, so yeah. TechRaptor gave it a 4.5 mediocre. Toe Jam and Earl Back in the Groove is a straightforward game that really struggles to find any form of relevance beyond its nostalgia factor. Uh, now, the bigger argument to make is was Toe Jam and Earl, from a modern perspective, even worth playing? Or was it just worth playing back in the day because there was a lot less options and standards were much lower? Uh, the pros for the game are colorful graphics and sound, and it plays like the original games. The cons are the obnoxious 90s nostalgia, token additions in many games, mediocre roguelike elements, and fa it's fairly boring overall. And yeah, if you're giving a game a 4.5 in the video game industry, that's pretty much a 1. That's, that's a 1 or 2 in, in reality. Next, we have a game on Steam called The Misadventures of Denise and Diana, which looks like it's an MS Paint Super Meat Boy attempt at a platformer. It looks really, really bad, and it's way too zoomed out. Just total empty space all over the place here. Uh, $5.99, no discount. That's easily dismissed. Not even worth considering any further. How many more of these do I have? Probably quite a lot. Uh, <laughs> yeah, I don't, we're falling further and further behind as more and more games come out. Next, we have a game on Steam called Packet Storm. It looks like it's very possibly a hacking simulation game. Doesn't look amazingly good, though. It's seven dollars and ninety-nine cents, no discount. 
I'm going to be generous just because I'm fatigued. Uh, I am decision fatigued at this point. So I'm going to put this on the fall list to see if somebody else will tell me that it actually is good. Uh, that's certainly no way to do business or, or look at these things, but that's really what it's come, in, come down to. Moving on. Uh, Gamatsu has an article, Horizon Zero Dawn sales top 10 million. Um, there is a speed run that I'm going to watch uh, for Horizon Zero Dawn. I just wish it would come out off of something besides PlayStation 4. Uh, it came out for the PS4 February 28th, 2018. So you're talking two years now. They could have... If they had ever any intention of releasing on PC, you're not going to have a two-year exclusivity contract. So that pretty much guarantees that it's never coming out um, for PC, which sucks. I guess at a certain point there might be a PlayStation 3 and PlayStation 4 emulator that just runs on modern PCs. And then you could just quickly pirate those games if they never come out to PC. I mean, if 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 the developers aren't going to give you any other choice. Right. Right. Let's do. I can't do both of these, so I have to do this and then this. And then I hunt alone. Let's see, what do I have here? Explosive trap will kill everybody. I hunt alone. Let's just hit that. Job done. Let's see. Next we have a game on Steam called Forgiveness, and for a second there I thought Forgiveness was the re-release of the game uh, Devotion, just under a different name and a different uh, creator. Uh, publisher and everything uh, that's kind of what I would do if I was Red Candle Games is I'd just say you know what let's just release it under a different name get different screenshots and and release uh, release it under a different uh, publisher uh, forgiveness is eight dollars and 49 cents discounted English only it might be good it might be bad it, it, it needs a fall just because you know these horror games they can look good and be terrible they can be terrible look terrible and on the rare occasions actually be good but I'm, I'm really nostal uh, decision fatigued at this point also Okay, how about that? I assume this is gonna save him. Nope. Okay. I think we've got one or two more games in, in me and then that's probably gonna have to be the end of the stream. We went about an hour and a half for three recordings, so that's four and a half hours of streaming and then yeah I am giving some small thought about maybe trying to start earlier a lot of that is just sleep schedule stuff though so it probably wouldn't change but I have heard from many varied people on the comments and I've seen a noticeable drop off of comments the later these go so starting earlier probably is a smart move um, although you never know maybe starting earlier gets fewer viewers in total uh, even if the comments go up uh, next we have a game on steam called Nogalius MSX this looks like an like old NES platforming game uh, since I have no recollection or nostalgia for this game and it seems like it's a brand new game 
I don't see, I'm still not in the mood to play something that looks like a Nintendo game that isn't. It's $3.99. Yeah, we'll go ahead and play that. Uh, with no discount. GameIndustry.biz has an article, Former Sledgehammer Senior Creative Director Launches Ascendant Studios. After working on Call of Duty Dead Space, Brett Robbins has lofty ambitions to create his own AAA title. So, I would love if it turned out to be a spiritual successor to the Dead Space series. Like a horror game series that's set... I guess in this space and future uh, environment, uh, he may not be able to do that without getting accusations of just infringing on EA's copyright or whoever, whoever funded Dead Space. I think it was EA. Um, I no, it probably was Activision. Um, let's see. Former senior creative director being in charge of a company runs the danger of the company not running smoothly and not finishing their first project, but it also runs the possibility um, uh, of there actually being a good artistic product being developed instead of just cash grab, microtransaction laden garbage being sold. Apparently, the San Rafael-based studio was opened a few months ago, and it's being backed financially by Vista Equity Partners co-founder and president Brian Sheath. S H E T H. Hmm. He worked on Call of Duty: Modern Warfare 3, Advanced Warfare, and World War II. Prior to that, he also served as creative director of EA on Dead Space. It was EA as well as the lead designer on From Russia With Love and The Lord of the Rings Return of the King. Uh, neither one of those games, I think, are, are particularly re relevant. Hmm. I want to make a big game is a quote here. Uh, one that's right up there with the best games ever made. That's a dangerous ambition, certainly. Um, it is certainly a dangerous ambition. You go big, you often go home with nothing. Particularly for the first game by a new company. Isn't that quote? Games have gotten better and better in reaching that quality bar that it, the best games out there do isn't easy. But I've been there before, I understand the process, I understand what it takes, so I feel fairly confident about that. Interesting, okay, so we'll see Observe in probably four years if Ascendant Studios goes bankrupt uh, about four years or if they have something to show. Uh, moving on, Gamatsu has an article, uh, the game Little Friends, Dogs and Cats is coming to the west this spring. It's a dog and cat virtual pet simulator. Um, let's see, what consoles or PC is it coming to? Switch, I think. Yeah, it's coming to the Switch, which was not a bad, bad release at all, you know. You spend two hundred fifty dollars on a switch for your kid, mm -hmm. uh, then you really can't probably afford a a dog. Let's see. Freezing trap. And that. Let's go ahead and attack the face too. A game called Gamatsu has an article, Kamiko is coming to the PS4, Xbox One, and PC between March and April in Japan. Uh, Kamiko, we can do a little bit of a web peek here, looks like this. So it's some kind of top-down, 8-bit, twin-stick shooter type game. 
Uh, it's a retro style RPG that launched for the Switch in April 2017. So yeah, that doesn't really catch my attention, but we'll talk about it, announce it. Apparently several games were announced from the same publisher because we also have Subaru City coming to the PS4, Xbox One, and PC between March and April. And this is what that looked like. And that came out for the Switch August 2018 and for the 3DS and smartphones. So these seem like almost mobile games, or in this one it actually was a mobile game that are getting ported. Uh, next we have a Gamatsu article, Slime, Taxi Slime Tactics launches in April in Japan, again, 8-bit graphics looking game, uh, this time no, seems like it's a Switch eShop game, I wonder if this is all from Altair Works, or Fly High Works, like, or maybe there was like a convention where things were announced. Uh, also, a game called Witch and Hero com are coming to the Switch in March in Japan. Again, 8-bit stuff. Apparently came to the PC on April 2016. Unfortunately, a game like this really doesn't gain any relevancy. I wouldn't go and buy this on Steam and play it just because it's coming out to the Switch eShop. Like, everything at this point is coming to the Switch eShop. It's, it's going to have to do better than that. It's going to have to look better. It's going to have to have more of a reason to exist. Um, right, if I play this... Hit that and do that. Hmm. And do that. There we go. Uh, let's see. Command throws another honor article Cytus Alpha launch latest trailer DJ Max collaboration announced Cytus being a rhythm game that seems to be pretty popular in Japan there's a whole trailer here that probably doesn't show you much because it's it's all music and rhythm game um, some of this is coming to the West I don't know if I could ever play it or how popular it is though Cast all the spells that have been cast. Let's see. I'm still not getting any secrets. So, this, and then this. The eternal hunt has begun. <clears throat> I'll just create something. Uh, Game of Sutra has an article, Tencent partners with Intel on its streaming service Instant Play. I think we may have already talked about this, but okay. Like, not a big surprise there. Um, they did announce that. Uh, here we have Techland playing to shut down its Polish publishing division by the end of the year, laying off 13. We already talked about that. Do 
this. Next, we have a game on Steam called Acrophobia, which seems like it doesn't understand the word acrophobia because um, this is not acrophobia. Uh, this is uh, acrophobia is the uh, fear of. Spiders. Hmm. Uh, anyways, well, this is one of any many many VR games where you're walking a tightrope, walking a steel beam. Two dollars and ninety-nine cents, no discount. It's really cheap for a VR game, but there's really no reason to to play any of these. They're they're jokes. They're ridiculous. That and then that. There's still one more. Than I would have liked it to be. Let's see if there's any reviews here. No. Hmm. Even if it was trying to do a pun and and be like acrobatic acrobatics phobia. The, the game doesn't seem like you're doing any acrobatics in VR. That would be very dangerous and difficult to render and animate. Moving on, Gamma Sutra has an article. Get a job, Cold Iron is hiring an experienced producer. Uh, so if you want to work for Cold Iron via Fox Next in San Jose, California, that job is available. I think we've talked about that job at least once before. Alright, are we at a point where I want to do this, or do I want to do this? Hmm. Hmm. Didn't need an explosive trap. Uh, Gamatsu has an article, A Plague Tale oh, Innocence Story Trailer, Survive the Plague. survive another turn yeah I think you can but if if they can do like spell damage off this like, unless this guy can play really fast oh no just take another turn all right interesting she's got an extra turn but but she's still gotta live within the limits of of the the rope. Right. If I survive this next turn, I'll be surprised. Did she run out of stuff? Or, I mean, she shouldn't have been able to run out of stuff. She should be able to attack. By my frozen heart. Maybe she ran out of time and she can't play anymore. Well played. Mm. The time is now.
Alright, that was kind of an epic fight. I'm going to push it one more game. So, we have over here a Plague Tale Innocent Story trailer. And we can see this is a different game than the last Rekha game that I, I saw that was called a Plague Tale, I think. Uh, or there's something else where you play as a mouse that's begin. like a plague. There's a story trailer here. Uh, it's due out for the PS4, Xbox One, and PC May 14th. Interesting. I guess I'll let that play and we'll see what what's going on. We'll jump through this. Yeah, I don't know how much of this is... This looks like it is a stealth kind of game in the Middle Ages where you're just going to try and escape being onslaught. And, oh yeah, and this is the game with the rats that that you have to use light to avoid the rats from eating you completely up. Um, just got an end to turn there. Yeah, I don't know how long or how good this game is going to be, but it looks very pretty. But I wouldn't be surprised if it is very much in the same vein of Hellblade uh, Suna's Sacrifice. Or... Uh, I think that was the name of that game um, where it's short and and just kind of very linear but that's not a bad thing if it's done well Next we have a game on Steam called Wounded that's already rated mostly positive so I think it deserves a follow. Looks like it's a horror game, looks like it's more than just some random assets building up. It's suffering from some dark screenshot syndrome but not too bad. It's relatively well lit for a horror game. Uh, we're not seeing any enemies or people or anything so it, it might be kind of empty. It's $11.69 discounted. Uh, yeah, this deserves to be on the follow list. We'll see if more people buy it and more people play it. Um, one. Let's see. In the turn. Next, we have a game on Steam called Trident Barrage, which I think is probably a tower defense game. Well, whatever it is, it looks horrible. A first person shooter, dungeon crawler game. Looks like Asset Flips. It's bad. $2.48 discounted. English and Japanese. Hmm. Yeah, we're getting more bad Japanese, weird Japanese games. Now, I wouldn't be surprised if there are a few people out there that put on their game that it has Japanese support and just cross their fingers that nobody in, who can actually read Japanese or speak Japanese plays it. Like, you, could, you could run a con pretty easily on, against that idea. Um, got all these charge characters and I could kill them but I don't even really have a reason to. Hmm. Next we have a game on Steam called Road to Eden. It's already mixed at 11 reviews so I'm not very impressed. It looks like it's a survival uh, game. A lot of asset flip things. Two. Yeah. I'm not saying anything here. Impressive. Early access for $19.99. This one is one of those games that if even if it got really good, it would have to uh, come out and be so popular that people were talking about it uh, before I would be willing to give it a chance. Let's see. Hmm. Let's hit that. Hmm. And in return, 
I'm just playing all the spell cards till the tenth turn. Unleash me. Yeah, there, there's always a possibility the game looks bad and I reject it, and and then I come back and decide, oh, actually this this was worth playing. Uh, Gamma Sutra has an article, Designing for Tough Choices in Cosmic Horror Game, The Horns. This is an interview with the developer for this game, The Horns, which may be interesting, may not be. Let's wait until it comes out before we go any further with that, though. I don't need to read a review or an interview with some, some game developer for a game I may have no interest in at all. Next, we have a game on Steam called Astronist VR. Looks like it's a space shooting uh, astronaut game. Like I, I tried to play the old Star Wars Battlefront, and I got in a spaceship, and I did not know you had to hit space bar to launch or dock, and I was hitting every other key on the keyboard. And I'm like, this is just not working. Nothing else was happening. Uh, this game is $9.99, it doesn't really interest me, particularly because it's VR, uh, so I just never get around to playing it. Okay. So what do we want to do? Just smash in the face. Uh, GameIndustry.biz has the same article, Wish Studios is closing down. We talked about that multiple times. I don't know what this guy's gonna do. He's got 10 health, and there's like two more turns. Hmm. So, I don't, I don't know what he thinks he's gonna do. Other than just maintain his current uh, livelihood. Hmm. So sweet. Hmm. Let's see. Next, we have a game on Steam called Deep Hole, which looks like it's probably an asset flip 3D platforming game. It seems really inconsistent here. You know, some kind of rocket man robot, but you're going through several different, kind of significantly different looking environments. This is $2.48 discounted. Yeah. I don't see anything there that interests me. And we just need one more spell. Let's see. I have no idea what this guy thinks he's gonna do. He's got three health left. Hmm. Uh, I kind of want to see this guy win somehow. So minions in his hand are getting plus one, plus one. So he's got like a super powerful minion that is getting buffed up in his hand. Okay. Can't do anything other than play this. Let's see what happens. Here comes a big hmm. 
Victory. Yeah, I don't know. I guess he could have won that. Alright, so let's let's just cover games and stop focusing on playing Hearthstone. We've got a game on Steam called Press F to Pay Respects. Obviously this is going to be a troll joke game. Maybe like a clicker game. It's six fifty nine cents with forty percent off. So yeah. No. That's not making it to the follow list. Let's see. Next, we have a game on Steam called The Tear or Tear. Hmm. Looks like it's kind of like a fairy creature in VR that flies around. Is there anything else to this, though? This seems just to be kind of like a immersive. Well, they say it's an immersive VR adventure game. To me, it looks like it's a surreal art show that's probably only 30 minutes long. Hmm. Problem with this is it's VR. Otherwise, I'd put it on the follow list. It's only $1.99. Uh, but. Yeah. Uh, I just don't see anything here that unique or that interesting. It's got like the credits in the trailer, so I wonder if that is the entirety of the experience in that trailer. That would be crazy. Next we have a game called Angry Farm, which to me looks like a troll game. Uh, it doesn't look too bad other than the trailer, but it doesn't look great either. I'd say play Stardew Valley or something. Early access. Two dollars and fifty cents. Yep. No interest in that. Uh, let's see. Next, we have a game on Steam called Skydiver, spelled weird. It seems to be. I think this is probably pre-bought assets for a flying game. Let's jump through this trailer and see what you're really doing. Like, maybe they pre-bought the airplane, and then you're just supposed to jump out of the airplane. Although this doesn't seem like you're... I guess maybe you have goggles on, and you are skydiving. I can't imagine that that would be fun in VR. Uh, or be anything like actual skydiving. It's $4.49 discounted. Might be... Something like this in VR might be useful for training people who want to do skydiving so that they don't screw up and kill themselves on their first dive. Uh, but I'd also like it to be more realistic and, uh, and more interactive than that. And I think there's wind tunnel training you could do at first or other kinds of real world physical training you could do instead of doing it in VR. Like, VR might be the first thing to just see if you're going to freak out uh, on skydiving, because that probably would eliminate half of the people uh, that that go up skydiving, as I bet half of them say, no, I can't do it, I can't do it, and they either get pushed out uh, by the instructor, they say, fine, we'll just take it back down, and they take their money and leave. So it might not be... Uh, it might not be a financially smart decision to have people try it in VR first. Uh, moving on, we have a game called Dino VR, which kind of looks like it's an attempt at a VR game uh, shooting dinosaurs. I don't know if this is is would be called the Dino Crisis clone style game. I don't know Dino Crisis enough to say that. 
This doesn't look terrible, but it's for Oregon. It's nineteen dollars and ninety nine cents. It's not visually appealing. Uh, with it doesn't have a lot of polish, but the idea. It's been done a lot better than in this game than I've seen in several other instances. Uh, still not making it to the post though. Um, next we have a game on Steam called The Castle of Burgundy, which is already mostly negative. It looks like it's a digital version of a board game, so I bet it doesn't play right. $10.49 with a 30% discount. Let's see. Final verdict refunded. 1999 called in it wants its user interface back, but seriously, this board game gets an award for the most unneeded screen space, uh, unused screen space. Tutorial is actually good. Quite disappointing, the interface is cluttered. Just an awful cluttery, clunky interface. I'm a huge Castle of Burgundy fan. Um, so yeah, this is pretty consistent. We've seen a lot of board games get made into digital versions by people that don't know how to make video games, and then they end up developing something pretty bad. Now, I have no idea what Castle Burgundy is, so that just makes it even easier to, uh, to remove that or not consider it. I just next one is tagged with sexual content so let me just look here hmm. okay I think we're cool so we have a game called die Iria interview with Kazuklu Bay and this looks like one of those 80s hardcore anime games in visual novel form you've got like a cross and blood and everything uh, you've got vague imagery of Nazism in it um, you've got a older female character or a younger female character a psycho looking male character you've got other things another female character this is $17.99, 10% off. English, full audio, and Japanese. I think this deserves a follow. Look at the amount of background that is put into this. Like, don't look at the character. Just look at the rocks and the detail there. That tells me that somebody really tried. Uh, look at the trees in the background here. This could have just been on a black background if they wanted it to but they're putting in the effort uh, to make it look good which most people don't do look at the buildings here like again could have just been standard stock imagery so that should go to the follow list we'll see if people like it uh, next we have a game on Steam called Arcane Domains which looks terrible uh, Bad, bad, bad. See, a lot of these developers that make these horrible looking 3D games, I bet they couldn't do any better in 2D, uh, too. That'd be an interesting experiment. Hey, you made a terrible looking 3D game. How about you go back and try and animate it in 2D and see if it looks any better? This game is $5.99 with no discount. I see no reason why this deserves to go to the follow list. Mm. Next, we have a game on Steam called Theseus Journey to Athens. It too looks awful. Um, I would kind of love to see a ancient Greek myth-based adventure game or story-based game uh, of some sorts, but that looks bad. $7.64 discounted. So, nope. And I think we're going to hit a stopping point pretty quickly here. And I'll just have some left over for Monday. So hopefully nothing will happen too much on the weekend. And Monday will be kind of slow. So next we have a game on Steam called Tenenbrus. I don't know 
that word. Dungeon looks terrible. Like early, early 90s 3D dungeon crawler graphics. But it came out in 2019. It's $4.79 discounted. Yeah, I don't get why people make games look like that. Like that's going to really sell. And then we have a bunch of Asian characters and then Life 1, which probably means one life because it's like HP 1. Looks like it's kind of a RPG Maker style game. Um, it's not widescreen. And it looks like an RPG Maker game, which are two fatal flaws. English is also not supported, which is a major fatal flaw. $4.99 for a Japanese only game hmm. okay we already talked about that one so I'm gonna just start skipping through this and seeing if there's any news that that needs to be talked about let's see a game called Wonder Gravity launches April 1st in Japan. Uh, it's coming out for the iOS and Google Play App Store. Uh, Zenkai Zero Last Beginnings details content editions and changes for the Western edition is what cha is changed in localizations. Uh, let's see. The PlayStation 4 packaging art uh, the Sachika bedroom scene CGI's uh, so in the western version Sachika the character will be wearing pajama bottoms in the Japanese version you can see her panties um, in the opening scene you see her panties uh, in the western version you don't uh, Child Rinko extended machine CGI in the Japanese uh, version. Child Rinko she covers her chest with her arms in the Western version. The position of her arms have been adjusted, so I guess to cover more. Like all child bedtime event cutscenes have been removed. So apparently, there's a significant amount of content that has been cut from Zenkai Zenki Zero Last Beginnings. Um, now, like, I'll wait until Censored Gaming comes out and does a more in-depth video on this, but that sounds like a, a decent amount of content is missing, uh, there. Uh, Zenkai Zero being a weird game in the first place, I'm not sure anybody really wants to play it, so we'll, we'll wait. We'll wait to, to go on and rant on that some more. Censorship, rah rah, bad. Uh, always bad. Uh, let's see. Gamatsu has an article. Uh, Case closed skateboard run. Phantom Thief Kid and Mysterious Treasures have been announced for the Switch. It seems like this is a infinite skater game. Featuring Detective Conan skating on a skateboard, uh, which is not really the Detective Conan game I would like to play. It's due out digitally in April in Japan. I don't know why they're calling it Case Closed though. Uh, it's it's uh, Detective Conan is the name in Japan. Uh, and they changed it to Case Closed in the West, and that was a mistake. If you haven't ever watched uh, the anime Case Closed, uh, or Detective Conan, whatever, I'd say check out some of them. They're kind of cool little mystery cartoons, get you thinking. Uh, this doesn't seem to be a murder mystery type game at all, though, so it's, it's kind of a pathetic tie-in. Guess I could have done a web peek there. Uh, GameIndustry.biz, Oculus Quest targets, quote, quality first approach with more stringent store curation. Uh, developers must have concept document approved before submitting games to the Quest store. Uh, so, 
apparently the Oculus Quest is a new generation of the Oculus, uh, so no longer the Oculus Go or the Oculus Rift. Uh, VR still not something that I think most people can get into. Hmm. TechRaptor has this interesting article. Apparently it's a band called Accidental Queens. They're going to release an audio-based adventure game. Uh, Accidental Queen Queens are the creators of a normal lost phone and another lost phone, Laura's story. Oh, so they're not a band. Interesting. So they're making this game called Alt Frequencies. I'd be interested in that, but this is kind of a premature hype thing type article also. Uh, yeah, I'm gonna leave a lot of these games to just talk about on Monday. GameIndustry.biz has a jobs around out. Codemaster promotes new SVP from within. Meanwhile, Bandai Namco Europe appoints a new strategic comms leader and Tapjoy gets a new CEO. So these are articles talking about people who got promoted, not job listings. It's always weird how there are two different sites that do games uh, jobs roundup uh, articles on almost a weekly basis, and, and they mean completely different things. Hmm. wanted to mention this game, and so I'll just mention it now. Like, we've got this game on Steam, Ubermosh Volume 7. This top-down twin-stick shooter series seems to be really, really popular, but at this point, they're kind of flooding Steam with 14 different games for $20.16. Um, they don't seem like they're an achievement game or anything like that. It seems like it's a legitimate attempt, although it probably is just selling you the same thing over and over again. Uh, and every time I look at Uber Mosh or see it on sale, it gets promoted to me quite a bit, but I, I never find anything that interests me in it. Hmm. Let's see. So I am at the point on my uh, Chrome browser where... Oops, there goes my Xbox controller. Uh, good thing they build that relatively well. I'm at the point where all of the uh, all of the articles are uh, taking up the entire front tab, so so I'm gonna have to use the keyboard to get any further. Uh, Gamma Sutra has an article: Eva Lejorgorn's grand strategy, a chat with Paradox CEO. Um, this is an interview. I probably won't ever have time to read it, but if it interests you, it's there. So I'm gonna hit Control F4, and then Control Tab, Tab. Uh, speaking of people who are flooding Steam, we have yet another game called A Maze something, A Maze Lunar this time. There's so many of these, 74 cents. Big bundle of 37 games for $16.23. Uh, ridiculous. Yep. Uh, Steam's gonna have to deal with that at some point. I don't see how they get around it. There's too many people repackaging the same thing. Hmm. I could not find that game Remy Lore on Steam, so apparently it's not on PC, or it's at least, at least not on Steam, which is kind of disappointing. It's also weird that it's just came out with no real announcement. Ah, oh, man. GameIndustry.biz has an article, Psychonauts Survive and Surviving the Publisher Shuffle. Tim Schafer says the studio experiences with partners aren't that unusual addresses struggles of Psychonauts 2 publisher Starbreeze. So, apparently, yeah, Psychonauts 2 may not come out, potentially. Uh, or it might be published pretty badly. Hmm. 
Like, how does a publisher screw up, I suppose, is if they just don't get it in storefront or get it in front of people's eyes or run any ads on it. Uh, that's how you would screw that up. Let's see. Dirt Rally 2. Let's see. Supermassive Games trademarks the House of Ashes, one of the Dark Pictures titles. Um, so the other one is Dark Pictures Man of Medan, so they got a trademark for whatever they're doing. I, I'd have to do more research on what the Dark Pictures titles are that's vaguely familiar. And see, at this point I'm just skipping through everything. Um, here's the tension. I'm gonna just keep looking at the tension and see if the game shows up back on the storefront. I bet it doesn't. Uh, the tension is still mostly negative. Probably will stay that way for the entirety of the next 30 uh, next 30 days and then that brings us to the humble neptunia bundle which i'm gonna give it maybe a couple hours if anybody really wants to support me go to the humble bundle store spend 12 dollars and get all of the humble all of the neptunia games steam codes and give them to me via twitter direct message that would be very appreciated um Otherwise, I'm going to buy it. I might put it off till tomorrow. But, yeah. That's my special bag for the month. Uh, and that is the top tier for, for it, which is $12. Usually when I buy a Humble Bundle thing, it is only the cheaper, lower tiers, mid-tiers mid sometimes. Alright. So, it's been, well, a little bit closer to five hours I guess and that's gonna be it for this recording we got all the daily quests done so we'll we're kind of good for Monday we've got a lot of games still to cover um, I'm falling further and further behind I might take some extra time to filter through all of those uh, that's it for this recording though as always I ask you to like share subscribe comment and watch every second of my videos if you want a friend to follow me on any social media sites there's a bunch of links down below in the description box and if you want to support me even further there's a link to patreon or you can friend me on steam and gift me a game off my wish list thank you for watching have a good evening